Hi guys, this video is about unions in C. You will see that these unions are kind of similar to structs. You also can define a new type with members. But compared to structs, these members will overlap in memory. I will therefore first review how structs are handled by the compiler so that you do not have this overlap. Then I will show you how unions are handled so that you actually have this overlap. And then of course we need applications. Why would you ever want to have a type where members do overlap? There will be actually two applications. The first is about NDNS and the second is about our compiler project. How we can use these unions for optimizing certain data structures and in particular this data structure for representing a single expression node. For reviewing structs and how the compiler makes sure that these members of a struct are not overlapping, but also for motivating the application of unions with respect to endianness, let's consider this declaration of a struct foo with two members. Let's also assume that we are not using some exotic machine. Let's assume that we have a platform where one byte consists of exactly eight bits. Then this first member has a size of four bytes and also this sec member. The sec member is an array of four bytes. And a variable of this type would have a size of eight bytes. And this is true even if you have alignment restrictions. Because this first member, of course, needs to be aligned then to an address which is a multiple of four. But this sec member, which consists of single bytes, can come right after that. And the compiler makes sure that these uh, two members do not overlap by keeping track of offsets for these members. The offset for the first member would be zero, and the offset for the sec member would be four. And now if you write something to this first member, and this will also motivate the application of unions with respect to endianness, then you would uh, write some memory cells that are used for this first member. Here you do not know the byte order. This actually depends on whether uh, you have a big endian machine or little endian machine. The compiler, of course, has to know that, but you do not have to know that. And you don't have to care about that, usually. Now, if you write something to this sec member, uh, element by element, for example, then you actually can exactly know uh, to what memory cell you write what byte. Okay, and now I want to use this uh, for motivating unions next. In the declaration, just this keyword struct was changed into the keyword union. The rest is exactly the same as before. And now you have a new type union foo instead of struct foo. The grammar for structs and unions is the same except for this keyword. And that also means if you have a variable of a union type, this variable also has members that you can access as you access members of a struct. The difference is that members of a union type always have an offset of zero. That's why these members overlap in memory. And the size of a union is the maximum size of its members. So in this case, because both members have a size of four, the size of this union type is 4, and also both members in this case occupy exactly the same memory location. So that means if you now write to this array elements of this second member like that, you also overwrite this first member of this union. And if you afterwards print out the value of this first member like that, you will see whether you do this on a big endian machine or a little endian machine. If you do this on a big endian machine, then you of course will see this value being printed out and on a little endian machine, this value. And this is exactly what I will now show you in the demo on two machines to which you also have access to. So let's do this together. So let's call this example union.c. Then we first have to include all these header files, int types, for this macros for printing this standard integer types and then standard int for this integer types themselves and of course standard io for the declaration of printf and then we declare this union foo and we want to have one global variable of this type and this has two members the first member has this type uint32 and then this Second is an array with four elements, and each element has this type uint8. And in 
the main function. We now initialize this array elements of this second member. The first gets this value hex one two, and then I just copy this and change this to one, uh, two, and three. And this second element gets the value hex three four, then hex five six and hex seven eight. And then I wanna print that. Uh, the first member foo dot u, and I wanna print that in hexadecimal with leading zeros, although I do not need it in this example. And this print hex thirty two is for printing this in hexadecimal. And now I will first compile and run this on Theseus, which is a big Endian machine, as you will see now. Here we go. And then I also compile and run this on Theon. And that's a little Endian machine. Now for us, of course, the actual application of this unions in C is the optimization of our data structures and in particular this data structure for storing a single expression node. We have these four members. The first member, kind, is used to identify what kind of expression node we have. This can be a binary expression node or unary expression node or primary expression node. And we already have this pattern uh, for making sure that we only access the right member. Uh, if it's a binary node, only this member binary should be accessed, for example. And that means that currently we are wasting a few bytes. If we allocate a expression node, then we also allocate memory for all four members. Also, we only need two of them, this kind member and then whatever other member should be accessed. And to optimize that, we simply can change the declaration of this struct into that so that we have a wrapper around this other three members so that they share the same memory or are overlapping. And that means if it's a binary node, then we just, as before, access this binary member, but it shares uh, memory with these other members, which are not used in this case anyway. And the same thing is, of course, uh, true for the other cases. If you have a unary kind of node, then you anyway just access this member. And so why not use the same memory that was previously unused. You even can make this uh, notation a bit nicer. This union uh, member has a name u. That's why you always have to uh, use u.binary, u.unary uh, and so on. Since C11, you can skip that and then uh, you have a nicer, more compact notation. And this actually also can be used for structs. Uh, in both cases, you do not have to give this member a name. And whether you also want to do this for the structs, whether you want to skip this binary dot left, binary dot right, I consider this actually as expressive, so I like it, but you could uh, skip it. I mean, if you know that it's a binary node, then you know it has a left and right pointer. And if you know that it's a unary uh, node, then you still need this name. But also for a literal, uh, you know that it's a literal from the kind field. So why do you have to write literal.uint? I want to have this because I think it's still expressive and nice to read. But uh, if you want to save some typing, uh, you can go with that. So this is what you should do next. I'll change the declaration and see that this will actually not have an effect for uh, others using our class because we have hidden this data structure anyway. And also in the implementation, if you use this anon anonymous members, you actually don't have to change anything.